Hi friends, my name is Kenton Whitman and together with my family, we aim to share wilderness skills, mindfulness practices, wild edible plants, family adventures, and skills that break you free from the limits of civilized life. Join us by subscribing to our channel and joining our YouTube family. Our family recently had the opportunity to go to the ocean. This was down in Florida in the southern part of the United States. Whenever we go to a new ecosystem, we try to learn as much as we can about it. We, of course, have been to the ocean before, but this was a new part of the ocean with new creatures. Really cool. <laughs> wow. The water was a bit cold for swimming or snorkeling, so instead, we walked the beaches and learned all we could about the beach ecology. And of course, our girls being who they are, wanted to rescue creatures. I did a little research online because one of the creatures we wanted to rescue were jellyfish. And all I saw was how dangerous it was and how you shouldn't do it. You're going to get stung, and even if you rescue one, well, you're not actually rescuing it because they die pretty much as soon as they get out of the water. Now, such warnings are not enough to hold our girls back. So we started educating ourselves on the species of jellyfish that were there. As we began to learn the different species of jellyfish, we could learn which ones had really strong stingers and which ones had very mild stingers. As soon as we understood that the stingers were underneath on the species we were looking at, we knew that we could grab them by the head and, if you can call it that, and carry them out into the waves. What was it like? That was weird. It feels so cool. What's it feel like? Jolly. <laughs> Were you afraid of getting stung? A little bit, but it's that effective off the road. If you want to rescue jellyfish yourself, this is how you do it. Get very familiar with the species. Research. Be able to identify them when you see them on the beach. Then, assess your risk. This is happening all the time in life, and I don't believe in blanket warnings that say, don't do this. Instead, assess the risk-benefit ratio for yourself, and then make an educated decision. For us, we got to know the jellyfish and we started rescuing, and we rescued hundreds and hundreds of these jellyfish. There were starfish too, and sea urchins, and sea cucumbers. And of course, the girls also packed along a trash bag so that we could pick up trash along the beach <laughs> if a jellyfish is upside down, you just pay attention to where any of its tendrils are, and then you reach over to the side, flip it over, and there you can see how you can grab it by the head, and wrapping your fingers down, but not underneath, so that you don't get stung. What about the other part of it, that the jellyfish don't survive as soon as they're up out of the water? Well, oddly, we found some that had been up for a long, long time when the tide was low and they were still up at the high water mark. And some of them were still moving. When we put them back in the water, we could see how they were doing. Some would just lay there still, but others would start to pulse and start to move. I hope that this can serve 
as a little guide to not just rescuing jellyfish, but approaching life in general. So often we're going to hear those blanket statements, this is dangerous, don't do it. Instead, we can educate ourselves. We can assess the risk intelligently. And that means we open the door into all kinds of experiences in life that otherwise would be closed because we're just trying to be so careful about being careful. I love them. I love them. Are either of these alive? Should I take it yeah. Love to you all. May your lives be filled with adventure and joy.